Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Natalia Ortiz, who is a junior on the Marymount Women's Lacrosse team. In her lacrosse career, so far, Natalia has played in 31 games and has amassed 19 goals, 31 ground balls, and 19 draw controls. Natalia was named to the Atlantic East All-Academic Team as a freshman, and before college, Natalia was a was her high school's team MVP three times and an honorable mention All-State as a junior. Recently, Natalia played for Team Puerto Rico in the U-20 World, Women's World Championship, and we're so excited to have her on today. So welcome to the podcast, Natalia, and how is everything going? Um, pretty good so far. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm so excited to have you on, and obviously you are finishing up fall ball, I assume. So how was fall ball for your team? And overall, how is your fall semester going for yourself? Um, yeah, it's been really great. Honestly, we had a really good fall ball because we have kind of, or at least somewhat a newer team. So we were just figuring out, I guess, how to play with the newer, um, freshmen that came in and it was really great and we did really well on our first play day this year That's good. That's good. Especially as an upperclassman, what's it been like to be in a more of a leadership role? um honestly it's been really fun it's a lot different than I expected it to be since last year I guess I kind of had more people to look up to and it's crazy now because now the upperclassmen are the sophomores and that's the people that everyone looks up to now Now, what are some things you've been doing uh, this summer and in the fall to get ready for next season? Um, honestly, really just working on my cardio just because, um, since I'm a midfielder, we obviously have to run a little bit more than everybody else does. And sometimes it can be a little bit harder to catch up on that after, um, I guess since fall ball isn't as intense as regular season is, but, um, I guess I had a little bit more of an advantage, um, this summer when I played with Puerto Rico, it was a lot more advanced, Um, than anything I've ever done before. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll obviously get to that later in the podcast. And outside of the Women's World Championships, uh, what did you do in it this summer? Did you do anything interesting, whether it was lacrosse related or not? Or was it just focused on preparing for that tournament? Um, honestly, a lot of my summer was pretty much just focused on preparing to play with Puerto Rico, but I did have a chance to go there and visit my family, so that was really nice to see them after not being able to go there for a while. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully you had a lot of fun visiting there. Um, but let's transition now and talk about sort of the beginning of your lacrosse career and sort of work all the way up to where you are today. So from the research I did on yourself, it says that you're from Miami, Florida. Talk about growing up there and how did you start playing lacrosse? Um, it's a really long story, but, um, I was born in Puerto Rico and my family decided to move there when I was about nine, 10 years old. And, um, for high school, I went to Westminster Christian. It's a small private school in Miami. And one day, one of my friends was talking about trying out for the new lacrosse team at school. And I guess she kind of showed me what, it was and I thought it was really cool so I went with her to go try out and since it was like so open to everyone there wasn't like because it was so new there wasn't really um the coach didn't really want to cut people so um I don't even know how to explain it sorry but since nobody was cut it was I guess easier to get playing time and to keep my spot on the team So the more I played, the more I started to like it. And the more I started to like it, I started do more, doing more research on it, on other teams and other players. And I started watching more videos and film on college lacrosse. And that's kind of how I fell in love with it. Nice. And growing up, did you have like a favorite lacrosse player or team that you like to watch? Um, I guess since I started so late, I wouldn't say, or I don't know, maybe I guess I would say growing up. to the point where I am now, but my favorite players were or are definitely Charlotte North, Izzy Skane, and as of right now, I've been watching a lot of Madison Taylor. Oh, yeah. She's a fantastic player. Yeah. I think she's the next... Uh, sort of Izzy Skein, maybe that's a bit of a bull take, but I don't think so. No, I definitely agree with you for sure. 
Now, like you mentioned before, before college, you played for your high school with Westminster Christian. So talk about your high school lacrosse days, what you took away from it, and what's your favorite memory from your Westminster Christian days when you look back on it now? Honestly, it was just really fun. I think that was like probably the time where I played with the most passion and I guess just for the love of it. And I was never stressed out about it, even though it does tend to stress me out sometimes. I still love it. But um, in high school, I guess it was really just all about my team and the people that I played with that made it so much fun and my favorite memory was actually when we played um it was like a small tournament at I'm pretty sure it was Gulliver Prep that we played at but um that was the first time that our team was able to beat or like I guess kind of go undefeated um in I don't know for like since we first started so we had won the whole tournament and we got the trophy which was just um a wooden stick but it was such a fun experience and I don't know I we never thought that we would get that far You also play club lacrosse for Miami Soul. I'm just curious what that experience was like for you and how did it help prepare you for college lacrosse? um it was also a lot of fun um it was really fun to get to meet other people from different high schools that also just started playing but It really pre prepared me in terms of, of the recruiting process and learning how to speak and reach out to other coaches. Now, one thing I find interesting about your career is obviously Miami isn't really known as a hotbed for lacrosse. So what is the lacrosse scene like in Florida and how is it growing since you started playing? Um, I guess it really just depends what part of Florida you're from, but... In Miami, there's not a lot of people that play, so I think it's a little bit more difficult to reach out to certain coaches or to get better unless you kind of do a little bit more research on it and watch more film. But luckily, I have had the opportunity because of my club coach to meet other coaches from the area that were able to give me private lessons And even just researching people on social media helped me a lot. Like, I usually actually have practices in plantation with um, one of my coaches. Uh, he's a private trainer. Um, his Instagram handle is Pure Tenacity. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it. But he's helped me out a lot. And he's helped me learn a lot about the, I guess, kind of more detail-oriented things that come to lacrosse when playing but yeah Now, what was your recruiting process like with Marymount and how did you find out about the school and what made you want to go there versus the schools you might have looked at? um since I started so late it was a little bit harder to find a lot of schools that were willing to recruit me like my senior year since I was already graduating but I reached out to Because I played for Miami Soul, but through Miami Soul, I met Coach Angie Benson, who allowed me to play with her on Florida Prime at a recruiting tournament. And my coach from high school actually emailed a few of the schools that I applied to and told them that I was going to be at that tournament. And Marymount was one of them. So um, my coach looked at or my current coach looked at my film and then she reached out to me and asked me to come visit the school so as and it was the only school I visited and as soon as I visited I just fell in love with it because mainly because of um, my current teammates now they were just so nice and they seemed so independent and so well off here and relaxed that I just I don't know I just really liked it and I decided to commit here Now, once you got to campus, what was like the biggest adjustment you had to make to college lacrosse? Um, honestly, everything, everything um, from my defense to the way that I train, stick skills, my IQ, I just I wasn't really aware of how much went into it um, since I first started. And talk about what it's like playing in the Atlantic East Conference and just the competition that you face each game. Um, I feel like since we face pretty much a lot of the same competition, 
the more you play them, the better you get and the more you kind of start to catch on to like other people's tendencies. So I guess the longer you play in the conference, the more fun you're able to have with, um, I guess, the knowledge that you already have from the teams that you play, if you even understand what I mean. Yeah. No, I definitely get it. Definitely Yeah. get it. Well, who's like your favorite team to go up against in your conference? Um, my favorite team is probably, it used to be Carini, but I guess since they aren't in our conference anymore, I would probably have to say Marywood or Newman just because of how competitive the game gets. Um, and I think the skill set, um, I feel like we're able to match each other's skill sets more. Now, obviously, how have you learned to balance academics and lacrosse at such a high level? Putting your schoolwork first and not worrying so much about um, having a social life or really lacrosse because it'll just come to you in the end. Now, what do you think has been the biggest improvement you've made to your game since your freshman year? I think honestly just playing with confidence because I used to struggle so much with overthinking everything that I would do, every little move or every mistake, but I think just confidence is really the only advice I could give. Yeah, how do you work on your confidence? Because it's sort of like a roller coaster. It can go up and down sometimes depending on how the season goes. How do you try to maintain a positive mindset and a good confidence demeanor? I think for me, it's honestly all self-talk. I guess telling yourself that you're good, you can do it. Um, it might sound a little bit conceited, but telling yourself that you're the best on the field, that um, nobody's going to take your spot, you're doing well, just really it's all positive self-talk. Now I'm curious also what when you look you, obviously you've you've you are two you're going into your junior year um so what has been like your favorite lacrosse memory you've had with Marymount so far Um, my favorite memory, honestly, I just, I love practices. I think practices are so much fun and I love how everyone is able to bounce ideas off of each other. And even though sometimes it's a little bit, um, or practices can be a little bit harder, it's still just, it always feels relaxed and like we can have fun and I guess kind of do our own thing and be creative with our plays. Now, last season, your team lost in the Atlantic East Championship. What did you learn from that game that is going to help your team for the upcoming season? And what are your team's goals and expectations for next season when you look look at it at this point of the year? Um, I think the biggest thing was coming into games with more energy and because we've struggled to, I guess, beat Cabrini in the past years that we've played them we kind of came into it expecting a loss in a way and I just feel like switching our mentality to a more positive one and just I guess pushing each other to play harder even when we're tired or when we're nervous or scared. Now, is there anything individual you want to see yourself accomplish for the upcoming season? Um, I just I really want to continue um, playing with confidence and just practicing to be the best player that I can be um, for the next, well, for this year and the next year, as long as I'm still playing lacrosse. Now, uh, let's talk about the recent U-20 World Championship. So you recently got to represent Puerto Rico in that tournament. Uh, what was it like getting the opportunity to represent Puerto Rico and just be a part of that tournament and getting the chance to play the best players in your age range um, in Hong Kong? It was honestly just like a dream come true because since the first time I started playing, I saw that Puerto Rico had a team and I would literally pray and like wish that I could do that and represent girls from the island because coming from Miami, there's like not that many Hispanic players who play lacrosse. So I just think seeing women who are Hispanic playing in I guess an American dominated sport is just incredible to me. And I loved every single bit of it and meeting, especially girls from team USA that I used to look up to so much. It was just insane. <laughs>
did you meet Madison Taylor? I know she was on that team. Yeah, I did. I actually have a photo with her and uh, Izzy Skein. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it was insane. Are they as nice as they appear online? Yes, they are, all of them. What I actually was... got merch from her. Oh, nice. <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. yeah, it was really cool. I, I want to ask, what was it like being in Hong Kong, too? I assume you've never been there before. It looked pretty cool, especially the field being like right in the middle of the city. But I also feel like the humidity must have been a challenge to sort of navigate as well. Yeah, it was really different, but we actually had practice in Puerto Rico because it was going to be so hot to um, prepare for that kind of weather. And it actually worked because <laughs> I think it might have been way hotter in Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. Yeah. It seemed like it was the humidity more of was the sort of big factor weather wise out there because some watching some of those games, it seemed like the shirts were like stuck to your skin like it was that humid. Yeah, it was that, but um, I guess the field that we practiced at, it was kind of somewhat similar because in Puerto Rico, it was raining so much too. OK, OK, that's really But yeah. awesome, though. What was like your favorite part about the tournament, like any specific game or was it just meeting like some of the players that you mentioned? Um, I think my favorite part was obviously ending up fifth place was incredible. I'm super grateful for all of that, but I think our first time playing Team USA, I was just so in shock that like it was hap like my dream was coming true right in front of my face. And it was just so insane. So let's transition now to a segment I like to call the non-lacrosse segment, where I ask you some non-lacrosse questions to get to know you more off the field. And I'll answer some of these as well to make it a more fun segment. So first one is, if there was a movie made about your life, uh, who would you want to play yourself and why? That's a really good question, but I actually have no clue. Um, honestly, I'm going to say Jenna Ortega because I was just watching Scream with my friends and I think she's a great actress. That's a good answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. yeah. Um, I would say like Ryan Gosling, just because it would be hilarious to have him play me in a movie because we look nothing alike. So Yeah. <laughs> he seems like a good actor too. So that's who I would go with. That's Now, a good one. now next on the cross question is what was your favorite TV show growing up? Oh, my favorite TV show. I used to actually watch Grey's Anatomy a lot with my mom um, when I started high school. So I'm going to say Grey's Anatomy. That's good. That's good. I, I can't watch that show because they've made so many seasons. It would be hard for me to catch Yeah, up. So. I never even finished it. <laughs> I would say for me, like, uh, like childhood shows, probably like Sweet Life on Deck. I don't know if you remember that one, but that was a Mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So next one up is who has the best style on the Marymount women's lacrosse team? Obviously you two, but besides yourself. Um, honestly, I'm going to have to say and give a shout out to Alex Mayo because she always has the best outfits. Who's the funniest on the team? The funniest. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say our goalie, Hannah Smith. What's been the most interesting thing you've read or seen recently? Um, that I've read or seen, I'll say the show Monsters. I've been binge watching that one and it's really good. What's it about? It's about, um, the Eric and Lyle Menendez case. I don't know if you've Oh. ever heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it on the news, but I'm not too like familiar about the ins and outs of it. Well, the show is very interesting. I uh, definitely got to take a look at it um, at Yeah. some <laughs> point. Uh, I would say for me, I was watching this documentary about the DJ Avicii, and I thought it was like really interesting. And I was just doing like more research about it, and it's just really sad to see because unfortunately he passed away Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, a few years ago due to suicide. And it was just really sad to hear like his father, like trying to advocate for mental health awareness in Sweden specifically, and like how he really tried to help his son. And like, he thought they were going on a better path. And unfortunately, Mm -hmm. it didn't seem like it. So it was just really sad to see like someone who had such was very talented and Yeah. seemed like he had a good support system, like couldn't overcome those battles. And I think it's really important to talk about that and sort of figure out different ways to prevent that stuff as well. And I think, uh, They create a foundation in his name and all that stuff. So I just thought it was really interesting to learn about that. Yeah. Is that on Netflix?
I don't know if it's on Netflix. I saw it on YouTube though. So um, there might be clips of it though on the, on Netflix or something like that. So hopefully they bring it there. Cause I do think uh, it's a, it was a really good documentary though. Um, it was like before he died, obviously, but um, it was just interesting to see sort of like how grueling it is to like tour around the world like that. Cause you think it'd be a lot of fun, but it doesn't seem as fun as it looks. Yeah. Now, last question I have for you, or last non-lacrosse question I have for you, Natalia, is what is one thing outside of lacrosse that you're deeply passionate about? Um, honestly, recently I've been really, really getting into photography, I guess mainly sports photography, because last year I started working with the school for fun because I thought it would be a cool job to have um, during the fall and the spring. But um, I actually created an Instagram for it and I've been working on learning how to edit the pictures and I guess on all the tech stuff for it. But yeah, I would say mainly photography right now. Nice. Nice. What's the Instagram handle? You, I want you to give it a shout out so people can go follow. It's called Digitals by Nazi. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. Well, I'll definitely follow it myself. Um, I'm also very passionate about uh, photography. Not, I haven't done a lot of sports games, but like it's more like going around to different scenic areas and taking pictures and Mm just -hmm. sort of learning how to take videos of it and make cool films. So that's something that Yeah. I've been working on as well. The editing parts that I feel like the most difficult thing to learn Yeah. Yeah, is the it photography. definitely is for sure. I've been struggling with it. Yeah, I feel like it's something, at least I'm very like uh, more critical on myself about it. Like I want it to be perfect. And I know that when you're in the beginning stages of it, it will never be as perfect as you Yeah, want it to no. be. So that's sort of the biggest struggle that I have. But I assume your pictures are awesome. So Thank I'll definitely you so much. give it a follow and I recommend other people to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now let's get back to some of the cross questions. Now, the first one I have for you is what should be done to help continue to grow women's across specifically like in Puerto Rico and Florida, where you're from? Honestly, I think um, having events like the World Games is the biggest thing because I feel like it really does help because there was there was a lot of girls from other teams in other countries that were actually from their countries, um, born and raised there. So I thought it was really cool to meet people who I guess could speak their native language to us, too. Um, but yeah, I think that that has been the most important, I guess, way to spread the game around or the concept of it. Now, last question I have for you, Natalia, is do you have any shout outs you want to give and who should we have on the podcast next? Um, shout out to my team and shout out to Coach K. I love them so much. And um, I think you should actually have our goalie from Team Puerto Rico, Isa, or the Hens and Vendrell Twins, if you haven't had them already yet. All right. All right. We'll definitely reach out and see what they have to say. But Natalia, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate Yeah, of you course. taking time out of your schedule and doing this. It really means a lot to us. I think you're a great player, but an even better person. So I just want to let you know that and obviously wishing you all the best stuff for your junior year. Thank you so much for having me.